بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Over the last few weeks we have spoken about Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه we spoke about his marriage to the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, Fatima radiallahu anha. We spoke about the success of their marriage. We spoke about the difficulties in terms of poverty that they went through in that marriage, but how they remained patient and they lived a very honorable and dignified life. Now, today inshallah we want to shift to another angle from the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anha. We want to speak a little bit about Ali radiallahu an on the battlefield. We want to talk about his physical strength and his courage and his expertise on the battlefield. And he was very well known for this. When we talk about the Sahaba radiallahu anhum who shined on the battlefield, you will usually hear a few names that immediately come up. Khalid ibn al-Walid, of course. Az-Zubair ibn al-Awwam. And Ali ibn Abi Talib. You will hear these names constantly mentioned when we talk about the battles that the Muslims fought against the disbelievers. Now in terms of military strategy and planning, there is no doubt that Khalid ibn al-Walid was the best in that regard. But in terms of physical strength and actual fighting ability on the battlefield, Ali was known to be the best of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum in this regard. He was brave and he was strong and he had great leadership abilities. So this is a, a, an excellent combination for a warrior, a person of courage, a person of physical strength and a person who knows how to lead. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he had all three of these characteristics. Now. We spoke earlier about the strength of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. We spoke about the fact that he was built in a very strong way. He was very muscular. He was physically very strong. We mentioned that even when he would hug someone, that person would have a hard time breathing while they were being hugged by Ali radiallahu anhu. That's how, how strong his grip was. But this strength that he had, this extraordinary strength that he had, he used it only for good. He used it only in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never used this immense strength that he had for personal reasons. Right? He only used it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The tarbiyah that he had, the upbringing that he had in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and the knowledge that he had, radiallahu anh, that kept his strength under control. Sometimes, you will see a person who's very strong and you'll see this person gets in a lot of fights because he knows that he can win these fights. So you'll see someone who's very strong always getting in fights for this reason or that reason, right? Ali radiallahu anhu, he was not like that at all. Even though he was physically very strong, he could control that strength. And that's because of the upbringing that he had and because of the knowledge that he had that kept that strength under control. And he only used that strength when it needed to be used in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now due to these abilities that Ali radiallahu anhu had, his physical strength, his courage, and his ability on the battlefield, and his leadership capability, due to all of these characteristics that Ali radiallahu anhu had, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave him many wartime responsibilities. There are many times Many conquests, many battles, many expeditions that the Prophet ﷺ appointed Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh, as the leader of the army. Even though Ali radiallahu anh, was much younger than many other of the companions of the Prophet. ﷺ. Ali radiallahu anh, was from the young ones, but still the Prophet ﷺ, gave him responsibilities during the wars, right? And this shows the trust that the Prophet ﷺ had in Ali radiallahu anhu and his capabilities. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he had a great role in the victory of the Muslims at the Battle of Badr, which took place in the second year of the Hijrah during the month of Ramadan. And this is the most important battle in the history of Islam. 
the battle of Badr. Ali radiallahu anhu, he had a great role in that battle. Now, as we mentioned in detail in the seerah, whenever these battles would take place between the Muslims and the enemy, before the actual fighting between both armies started, there would be a few duels that took place, a few one-on-one one, one -on -one duels that would take place before both armies actually started fighting each other as a whole. Right? So one army would be on their side and the other army would be on the other side. They would be facing each other, but the fighting wouldn't start yet. One person would go forward from one side, another person would come forward from another side with each of their armies behind them. And these two people would fight one on one. And the armies would not get involved. Right? So these duels, which are known as uh, Mubarazat, this would take place before the actual war between the armies started. This was a common practice, right? So during the Battle of Badr, there were a few of these duels and Ali radiallahu anh participated. We'll talk about how that went, inshallah, in a minute. Now during the Battle of Badr, there was a man from the Kuffar, from the Mushrikeen of the Quraysh. His name was Aswad ibn Abdul Asad al-Makhzumi. And he was known to be a very strong warrior from the Quraysh and he was also known to be a vile man, a vulgar man who had no manners and no mercy. Right? He was a person of very bad character. So this man from the Mushrikeen Aswad ibn Abdul Asad al-Makhzumi, he came forward on the day of Badr. Why did he come forward? He came forward because the Muslims had a better location for their army than the disbelievers. The Muslim army had a water supply. They had a well on their side. Whereas the kuffar, they did not have any water supply on their side. So the Muslims here, they have a great advantage at Badr. They have drinking water. The kuffar, they don't. And you need water, of course. Right? So this man, Aswad ibn Abdul Asad al-Makhzumi, he sees that the Muslim army, they are situated next to a well. They have a water supply. So what does he say when he sees that water supply? This is before the fighting started. Both armies are on their own sides. Fighting has not started yet. And this man, Aswad ibn Abdul Asad, he sees the Muslims have this well. So he says, He said, I swear by Allah. And the mushrikeen of the Quraysh, they believed that Allah was their creator. But they were mushrikeen because they associated partners with Allah. They worshipped idols alongside with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they did believe that Allah was their creator. So this man, he actually said, Allah, That I make, a, I make a covenant with Allah. min That I will drink from their water supply. I will go to the, the, the Muslim water supply and I will drink from that water. Or I will destroy their water supply. Or I will die trying. Either I'm going to drink from it, or I'm going to destroy it, or I'm going to die attempting to do this. Right? So he comes forward. He goes to the Muslim side. This is basically like a duel. He's saying like, look, I'm going to go. Let's see if someone can stop me. So he moves forward. And who comes out to face him one-on-one? -on -one? Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu anhu. The uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He came forward and they dueled. Aswad ibn Abdul Asad al-Makhzumi versus Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. They dueled. Hamza radiallahu an killed him with one strike of the sword. Hamza radiallahu an was known as a great warrior. right? So he, he easily killed him with just one strike of his sword. So that was the first duel. And Hamza radiallahu an he won it easily. After that... Three more warriors from the Mushrikeen of the Quraysh came forward for duel. Three more came forward to f and, and they wanted to fight three of the Muslims. So instead of one on one, three on three. Right? So who are these three from the Mushrikeen of the Quraysh who came forward? Utbah ibn Rabi'ah and his brother Shayba ibn Rabi'ah and Utbah's son, Al-Walid ibn Utbah ibn Rabi'ah. So two brothers, Utbah and Shayba. And Utbah's son, Al-Walid ibn Utbah. So they're all from the same family. And this was a family of high status of the Quraysh. And Utbah ibn Rabi'ah in particular, 
he was a, a, he was one of the worst enemies of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of the greatest enemies of Islam right so these three they come forward and they asked these three asked who will duel us we want three from the Muslim side to come and fight us three so three young men from the Ansar from the people of Medina they came forward to fight against these three men from the Mushrikeen of the Quraysh so these three men from the Quraysh Utba and Shayba and Al-Walid they said Man al-Rahd who is this group who has come forward to fight us and these three young men from the Ansar they said Rahtum min al-Ansar that we are a group of three people from the Ansar and then these three men from the Quraysh these Mushrikeen from the Quraysh they don't accept this they consider themselves, you know, we are from the we are from the noble men of the Quraysh. We're not going to we're not going to fight against these people from these these tribes, the tribe of Aus and Khazraj, the Ansar. No, that's not the same as Quraysh. We want people who are who are on our level. This was this was a matter of honor for them and status. So when they heard that these three men who had come forward to duel with them were three men from the Ansar, they rejected this and they called out to the Prophet. ﷺ. They said, Ya Muhammad. أخرج إلينا أكفاءنا من قومنا. He said, "Ya Muhammad, bring forward from your people to fight against us those who are equal in status to us. From our people, bring three men from the Quraysh. We're only going to fight people who are equivalent to us in status. So we don't want Ansar. We want people from the Quraysh. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he tells three people from his family to stand up." Ubaida ibn al Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib. Radiallahu an Ubaida ibn al Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib. This is the cousin of the Prophet. And he tells Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an also to stand up. And he tells Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu an to also stand up. Even though Hamza, he already just won the first duel. Now the Prophet is sending him in the second duel as well. Right? So he sends three men from his own family Ubaidah ibn al Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib, Ali ibn Abi Talib ibn Abdul Muttalib, and Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, all from the family of Abdul Muttalib. From the family of Abdul Muttalib. So they go forward. These three new men now go forward. And this is going to be the first time that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, participates in a war. Right? And he's young, he's still young at this time. Ali radiallahu anhu during the battle of Badr, he was 24 years old. Right? So he's still a young man. So these three men now, from the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they step forward. And the three of the mushrikeen of the Quraysh, Utba and Shayba and Al-Walid, they ask them, Man antum, who are you? They can't really see who they are because you know, they, they have armor over them, they have a helmet, right? So it's not easy to, to recognize who is who. So they ask, Man antum? And then Ubaidah says, Ana Ubaidah ibn al Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib. And Ali says, Ana Ali ibn Abi Talib ibn Abdul Muttalib. And Hamza says, Ana Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. So now they see that, okay, now the, that now the Prophet Muhammad has sent three people from the Quraysh, from the honorable ones of the Quraysh. So now they are satisfied with this and they say, Naam, Akfa'un Kiram. Yes. These three, they are at our level and they are honorable ones and we will fight with them. Right? So now the fighting begins. Ubaidah ibn al-Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib fights with Utbah ibn Rabi'ah. Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib fights against Shayba ibn Rabi'ah. And Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh, fights against Al-Walid ibn Utbah. So it's three on three, but it's actually each one is one on one, right? So Hamza, he, finish, he finishes off Shayba very quickly. Just, you know, two or three strikes, it's finished. Also Ali radiallahu anhu, even though this is his first time particip participating in a war, he finishes off Al-Walid ibn Utbah very quickly. So Hamza and Ali, they finish their job very quickly. But as for Ubaidah ibn al-Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib and Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, their duel lasted longer. And in the end, they both hit each other with fatal blows. And both of them died from their wounds. But of course, Utbah, he died as a mushrik and as an enemy of Islam. And Ubaidah radiallahu anhu, he became the first shaheed of Badr. 
He became the first martyr of Badr radiallahu anhu wa ardah. Right, so Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, from the outset, from the beginning of the battle of Badr, he shows that he is a great warrior. Walhamdulillah. Then the fighting started between both armies after these duels. The fighting started on the day of Badr between both armies. And the Prophet ﷺ gave Ali عنه, a great responsibility on that day. He gave him the responsibility to hold the flag of the Muslims. So the one who is holding the flag of the Muslims is actually the one who, is, who has a great level of responsibility on the battlefield. Right? So Ali radiallahu anhu was given that distinction and he was given that responsibility. And alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslims were victorious with a great victory. And Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he played a, a great role in that victory. Walhamdulillah. So that was Ali radiallahu anhu on the day of Badr. Alright, now the next year, the next year, the, the kuffar of the Quraysh after their humiliating loss at Badr the year before, now they want revenge. So they come to fight against the Muslims again. And in the third year of the Hijrah was the battle of Uhud. And the flag bearer of the Muslims on the day of Uhud was the great companion Mus'ab ibn Umair. Now, when the battle of Uhud started, the Muslims were winning at the beginning. Just like they were winning at Badr. They were winning in a, in a very, very... Uh, very very big way at the beginning of the battle but then things turned around when a few of the uh, companions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had appointed a few of the archers that he, he had appointed to stay on this hill they left their station before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave them the permission to do so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told them do not leave this position until I come and I tell you to leave this position but they thought that the battle was over. It looked like it was over. So without getting this permission from the Prophet ﷺ, most of them left. A few of them stayed, but the majority of them left without getting permission from the Prophet ﷺ to do that. And because of that, things turned around. The Muslims were winning up to this point with a great victory. But after this incident happened, after the, the archers left their stations, Khalid ibn al-Walid, who was not a Muslim at that time, Khalid ibn al-Walid, who was one of, the, one of the generals on the side of the mushrikeen of the Quraysh on the day of Badr, on the day of Uhud, he was able to launch a surprise attack. And then after that, the Muslims suffered very heavy casualties. The battle of Uhud, it was not a victory for the kuffar. You cannot say that it was a victory for the kuffar because they still didn't accomplish anything. The, the, the kuffar, they were not able to take Medina. They didn't take the city. They didn't collect any spoils of war. So they didn't win. But the Muslims also didn't win. So neither side won this conflict. But the Muslims definitely suffered more casualties than the kuffar. So Mus'ab ibn Umair, who was the flag bearer for the Muslims, he was martyred. Radiallahu anhu wa ardah. And then after that, Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, he took the flag. He was given the flag. So now Ali radiallahu an, he has the flag in his hand. Usually the person who's holding the flag, you know, the army, they, 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 they gather around him and he's basically the one who's controlling the direction of the fighting, right? The one who's holding the flag. So usually the one who's holding the flag is not actually fighting. He's just leading the army. But Ali radiallahu an, he's holding the flag in one hand, in the left hand, and he's continuing to fight with his sword in the right hand. This was, this was the level of uh, expertise that he had on the battlefield, that he could hold this big flag in one hand and he could continue to fight with the other hand, with his sword, subhanAllah. This is, this is not something that most people can do, but he was able to do this. And he continued to fight and he killed anyone who came close to him. On that day, he slaughtered many, many of the kuffar on that day. A number that can't even be counted. Only Allah knows how many people Ali radiallahu anhu killed on that day. Anyone who would come close to him, he would kill him. And he actually called out. He has the, imagine this. He has the flag in his left hand. He has his sword in his right hand. Fighting people, killing people right and left. And he says, Ana Abu Al-Qusam. That I am the one who will destroy anyone who comes in my path. 
So he said this very loud and this struck fear into the heart of the kuffar. Now the flag bearer of the mushrikeen of the Quraysh was Abu Sa'ad ibn Abi Talha. So when he heard Ali ibn Abi Talib call out, Ana Abu Al-Qusam, that I am the one who will, who will destroy anything in my path. Then Abu Sa'ad ibn Abi Talha, the flag bearer of the mushrikeen, he says, Ya Abu Al-Qusam, hallaka fil mubaraza? Oh Abu Al-Qusam, you call yourself Abu Al-Qusam, do you want to fight me one on one? And Ali radiallahu anhu, he says, Naam, let's fight. So both flag bearers, the flag bearer of the Muslims, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and the flag bearer of the Mushrikeen, Abu Sa'ad ibn Abi Talha, they fight with each other with this duel. And Ali radiallahu an is able to strike the armor of Abu Sa'ad, and the armor falls off. And he's able to get a good hit on his body as well. And he falls down, but he's not dead yet. And then Ali radiallahu an does not finish him off. He just moves back. So then some of the companions who were around, they said, why didn't you finish him off? He's down on the ground. Why didn't you finish him off? So then Ali radiallahu an says that when I hit him and he fell down, his, his, uh, his private parts became exposed. And I had already injured him. I know that I hit him with a, a deadly blow and he's going to die from that for sure. There's no way that he's going to survive the blow that I hit him with, with my sword. Uh, but because his private parts became exposed, I didn't want to kill him like that, right? So look at this. He has honor even in battle. Ali radiallahu anhu, he knows, okay, you know, my job is done. This guy is going to die. But look, I don't want to kill him in this type of a situation like this, right? Subhanallah. This was the honor that he had and the control that he had even on the battlefield. All right, as we know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself on the day of Uhud was injured. He was injured quite badly on that day. And Ali radiallahu anhu was from those who went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who went towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to help him and to protect him. So Ali radiallahu anhu, when he heard that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had been injured, he rushed to get to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he killed anyone who got in his way. And the sheath of his sword, you know you have a sword and like you know when you're finished using the sword, you put it inside the sheath, right? So Ali radiallahu anhu, he took the sheath of his sword and he broke it and he threw it. And he said, this is not necessary anymore. I don't need, I'm not going to be putting my sword back. Because I'm just going to be killing everyone who gets in my way. So he actually broke the sheath and threw it away. And he kept his sword exposed and killing people right and left in order to get to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to protect him and to defend him against those who were trying to harm him and those who were trying to kill him. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he was able to reach the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet ﷺ was pretty badly injured ﷺ. He was bleeding and blood was on his face. So Ali and he got water to clean the face of, of the Prophet ﷺ from this blood. So, so he was there. Ali and was right by the side of the Prophet ﷺ during his most difficult time on the day of Uhud. Ali and on that day, on the day of Uhud, his, his sword... He used it so much that his sword got bent, right? His sword actually got bent due to the severity of his use of that sword against the enemy. After the battle was over, after the battle of Uhud was over and Ali radiallahu anhu went back to his home, his, his, he, he had his sword with him and his sword was all red, all red, just drenched in, in the blood of the enemy. So he comes back with this red sword and he gives it to his wife Fatima radiallahu anha and he says to her Igsili anhu damahu laqad sadaqani al-yawm that clean the blood from my sword this sword was very loyal to me today this sword it, it, it did its job today alhamdulillah it was very loyal to me today right so he told Fatima radiallahu anha clean this sword so this was Ali radiallahu anhu. Look at his role in the battle of Badr. Look at his role in the battle of Uhud. Alhamdulillah, he stands out. He really stood out in both of these battles because he was one of the greatest warriors from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now the next major battle after Uhud was the battle of Al-Ahzab, the battle of Khandaq, the battle of the trench. And Ali radiallahu anhu, again, he had a great role 
in that battle as well. And inshallah, we'll talk about Ali radiallahu an and his role in the battle of Khandaq next week. Bi'idhnillah. Jazakumullah khaira wa barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.